He was the leader of one of the most violent drug operations in Baltimore and was killing people left and right with a smile on his face. He was rumored to have been involved in up to 19 murders and was convicted of six of them. In fact, the police named him the city's number one trigger puller. He would proceed to gather up a crew of TTG shooters to go and kill. Lamont. Montana and his TTG crew pulled up in two vans in the 900 block of West Fayette Street and spotted Lamont in a crowd of people. One shooter hopped out of each van and shot into the crowd trying to hit Lamont. Lamont was shot 17 times, but three other God. innocent people were hit God. in the crossfire. A woman named Jacqueline Parker was shot 11 times, and a man named Damn. Gerald Thompson was shot. 19 times. What up, Moolah Gang? It's your boy Mac Moolah, aka Mr. Moolah. Mac, we back with another video, another reaction on Photo Gray. Let's get into it. Ski, I'm feeling good. Hope everybody else feeling decent. Hope y'all doing all right, folks. And if you're not doing all right, take this video right here, clear your mind, stop thinking about your problems, and just vibe, twin. Photo Gray. I got this baby thonky on me because I already have the adult thonky and it's in my body right now. Holla if you hear me. Let's get it. Today, the city's top cop says they caught Baltimore's top killer. In a news conference earlier today, police announced the, the arrest of 21-year-old Montana Burnett. Brian Kubler is here now to explain why the commissioner says the city streets are safer for this. Montana Malik Baronet. It was this 21-year-old police say shot. Alfonso Williams on this part of West Lafayette Street two years ago. But they uh. say it would be just one life he snuffed out. He may in be a responsible for a dozen bodies. Well, some people just be tweaking, and this is what I be telling people about a lot of shit. Like, when somebody catch somebody for one body or one this, one that, like, a lot of times, shorty, you don't get caught on your first body. You don't get caught on your first robbery. So a lot of these when they get caught for a body, it's like, I already know you got more than that, shorty. It's crazy. He suffocated in fear. Baronet is an absolute poster child for what a repeat offender is in Baltimore City. We are certain he has been involved in numerous acts of violence to include multiple shootings and multiple murders. God, the city damn. of Baltimore has built a reputation for itself as one of the most dangerous places in America. No Underneath the hard-hitting football and cold weather, Baltimore has a dark underbelly ruled by vicious drug organizations that terrorize the city and boost the crime rate. Mm. The subject of today's video was like Marlo Stanfield from The Wire in real life. He was the leader of one of the most violent drug operations in Baltimore Dang. and was killing people left and right with a smile on his face. He was rumored to have been involved in up to 19 murders and was convicted of six of them. In fact, the police named him the city's number one trigger puller. The subject of today's video is not other than- He was accused of 19 bodies and got convicted for six of them, short. Pause, listen, I have a mentorship called the Moolah Membership where I'm going to teach you how to get rich with business, YouTube, crypto, stocks, financial literacy credit every single way and I became a millionaire by the time I was 23 years old I'm going to teach you step by step for only $50 click the first link in the description right now and get added to my group chat where I'm going to give you one-on-one -on -one help to make sure you get rich in 2024 click it right now stop tweaking because we got very 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 limited spots and I don't want you to miss this bag Montana Baronet also known by the nickname Tana was born in Baltimore Maryland in 1995 he grew up in an area of Baltimore called Sandtown, Winchester. Mm. Sandtown, Winchester is one of the roughest areas in the whole city. According to BaltimoreCity.gov, over 50% of families there are living below the poverty line, and over 86% of children there were born to single-parent households. Growing up, Montana pretty much had to fend for himself. His father was a Jamaican immigrant and got deported when Montana was just four years old. Damn. His mother was always out roaming the streets. And Ain't it crazy how every time, every single time somebody out here catching like a million and ten bodies, bro, they always got the same exact, like, very similar stories, folks. They always got the, oh, single mama, oh, grew up in the projects. Mama was broke. Mama was on this. Mama, like, they always got similar. Daddy got deported. Daddy died, daddy went to jail. Like, they always got a lot of very similar stories on phone. I'm, I noticed was that rumored shit. to be a drug addict. Baltimore is a city full of drug dealers. Oh, okay. And in an area like Sandtown, Winchester, those are the only people making real money. 
Naturally, a young boy without guidance like Montana would look up to them and aspire to be just like them. When he was around seven to eight years old, Montana and his brother named Terrell Sievels would get involved in the drug trade and start doing favors for drug dealers. Eventually, when they were young teenagers, a member of the Black Gorilla family named Davon Robinson recruited them to run one of his drug operations in Sandtown. Over time, Montana and his brother would go on to start their own crew called TTG, standing for Train to Go. The TTG crew grew to over 300 members and they were making over $50,000 a week selling drugs and doing murder for hire. Despite the money he was making, Montana wanted to be respected and feared by those around him. And that's where you up at. I would have been getting my money and skating, shorty. I'm fucking them. I wasn't getting that much money from trapping. I was getting a little, you know what I'm saying, a little few hundred every day, maybe. It was a few days, my made 25 bucks. I'm going to keep it a hundred. I ain't never want to be respected. No, I just wanted my money so I could give me some, you know, I could do what I want to do. Kick it, give me a little car, go to the party on the weekends. You see, that's what I wanted some money for. This would lead to him becoming more and more violent, and he would soon grow into a cold-blooded murderer. On May 3rd, 2014, Montana would kill for the first time. On this day, two sisters were hanging out outside of their home in Sandtown when Montana walked up to them and made crude comments about them. He basically told them that he wanted to smash both of them and he told one of them that their thighs were exposed and that she needed to cover up. The women were offended, so they chirped back at him. Montana then responded, telling them that he does what he wants. The girl's brother, named Alfonso Williams, was nearby, and he joined in to defend them. He told Montana, yo, you don't talk to my sisters like that. That's not the way you talk to them. They're not hood rats. Montana responded and said, my bad, and that he was just playing. Alfonso then attempted to make peace by shaking his hand and inviting him to come over later that night to watch a fight. Hours went by and it was now nighttime. Alfonso walked out of his house to wait for the pizza delivery to get there. While well, Montana pulled up carrying a gun and shot him nine times. What the f Alfonso was shot in the chest, arms, and neck and was transported to the hospital where he was tragically pronounced dead See? at just 23 years old. Hey, I, I already know what type of he is already, shorty. He wanted him, as soon as Ro said he wanted to be respected, I already low key knew what type of nigga he is, folk. Like, you out here making, you creating reasons to go catch a body. Like, mentally, you gotta create this reason so you can catch a body so you can go back to your hood and say you a savage. Y'all be lame and weird, folks. That shit is weird, man. I don't care what nobody say. It's weird, folks. Come on, man. This would only be the beginning of Montana's killing spree. It go down in Baltimore, I heard, though, boy. Montana God, was close friends with a rapper named YGG Tay. One of Tay's other friends, a man named Terrell Hellrell Jarrett, made the mistake of misplacing a substantial amount of the rapper's money. Mm. When Tay confronted him about it, Hellrell proceeded to slap him. Following this incident, Tay would put thousands on Hellrell's head and oh. Montana would allegedly collect it. On June 29, 2014, Hellrell was playing dice on a sidewalk in the 1300 block of Ward Street when a gunman strolled up to him and opened fire, striking him in the chest and stomach. Hellrell was taken to the hospital where he was tragically pronounced dead at just 21 years old. Montana is believed to have been the gunman in this incident and the one that got paid. Right. Unfortunately, the killing wouldn't stop there. He just getting started. See, now they start feeling themselves. Like, ooh, I call one, I call one for playing with me, I call one for some money, boy, I'm a real mother. Now, now he going crazy. Now he even, he making up more reasons to catch bodies now in his head. Because he want to feel that power. He want to feel that, it's like a real evil villain type shit, man. Real deal, dude. Like, it's like some real villain Thanos type shit. Like, you trying to get more and more power, you trying to take more and more lives, catch more and more bodies so you can feel more and more like a demon. I don't know. Four months later, two other them. local gangbangers, James Blake and Rodden Langley, were killed. Their mistake Damn, had been trying time. to kidnap Milk, real named Roger Taylor, who worked closely with a major drug importer named Shango Owens was and was financing Wajiji Tay's career. The kidnappers mm -hmm. grabbed the wrong person. 
They kidnapped a guy named Scratch, renamed Darius Singleton, who was Tay's friend and had borrowed Milk's car. After realizing they had the wrong guy, Blake and Langley stripped Scratch, took his money, and let him go. When word reached Milk and YGG Tay, a bounty was offered. Both Blake and Langley were shot dead. James was Blake was just 24 years end? old. And Hold on, wait a minute. I both know Blake and Langley were niggas. shot dead. He was robbing niggas? He looked like Carlton, folks. Come on, man. Niggas James Blake tweaking. was just 24 years old, and Ronald Langley was just 22 years old. Montana and another TGG member named Binky, real named John Harrison, were named by witnesses and on social media as the likely trigger men. Langley was set on fire afterwards. Damn. His blackened remains were discovered in November behind a West Baltimore elementary school. Come on, what kind of low-down, dirty, sick man you gotta be, folks? You gonna catch the body? You gonna smash him right there? You gonna clip him right there? Burn his body and leave it behind the elementary school so the little goddamn kids can see it when they trying to go on the motherfucking slide in the swing, man? Come on, G. Have some class, folks. You bogus as hell, gang. Not only are you a serious sir, you are wicked, folks. You could have put that shit anywhere else, man. You could, the field, a high school, a college, somebody a little older. You're going to put it behind the elementary school kids, folks, and just fuck up everybody's life. Like, come, can you have a little bit of goddamn common decency? Just a little bit of common decency, folks. The killing. God. He's still catching bodies. Oh, I forgot. It's 16 of them. On January 4th, 2015, Montana and Binky were driving down the 1100 block of North Woodier Street when they spotted a BGF member named BZ, oh, renamed up. Brian Chase. Montana right. and Binky had been looking for BZ because he told someone that there was money on Binky's head. This enraged members of TTG and made them want to kill him. When they spotted BZ, Binky hopped out of the car and shot him multiple times. After being hit, BZ started to crawl away towards a fenced yard when Montana and Binky pursued him and finished him off. BZ was shot a total of 14 times. He would later Damn. be discovered by the police and transported to the hospital where he was tragically pronounced dead at just 32 years old. He not even Montana and other members of TTG would follow this incident with a horrific broad daylight triple homicide. Triple? God damn. Oh my God, it's getting bad. It's getting bad. In June of 2015, an attempt on Montana's life was made. One day, he was riding a dirt bike in the streets when bullets flew by him. Fortunately for him, none of them struck him. Montana believed that a BGF member named Dirty, real name Lamont Randall, had sent the shooter to try to kill him. He would proceed to gather up a crew of TTG shooters to go and kill Lamont. Oh, On July shit. 7, 2015, they found him. Uh -oh. On this day, Montana and his TTG crew pulled up in two vans in the 900 block of West Fayette Street and spotted Lamont in a crowd of people. One shooter hopped out of each van and shot into the crowd trying to hit Lamont. Lamont was shot 17 times, but three other God innocent people were hit damn. in the crossfire. A woman named Jacqueline Parker was shot 11 times, and a man named damn. Gerald Thompson was shot 19 times. Damn. Bro, they blinked into a crowd and hit them that many times, shorty. You know they had some big... That's, that, that is f up. And I'm saying everybody they say he caught is popped them 12 times, hit them 9 times, 12 times in the leg, 19 times in the head, 22 times in the chest. I'm like, damn. Like, folks, it's really... Hey, man, somebody, man... A fourth right, victim bro. named Ashley Johnson was shot as well. Lamont, Jacqueline, and Gerald would all tragically be pronounced dead. Lamont was just 39 years old, Jacqueline was just 53 years old, and Gerald was just 34 years old. Ashley survived her injuries. Montana was believed to have been paid $10,000 for being one of the gunmen in this murder. Before finally getting caught, Montana would be linked to one more murder. Before he finally got caught. Montana and TTG were even willing to kill members of their own crew if they felt they had been crossed. A TTG member named Thug, oh. real name Antonio Addison, had been associated with a man named Andrew Johnson. TTG believed that Andrew was cooperating with law enforcement, so they wanted to kill Antonio just for associating with him. On May 25th, 2016, 
You see what I'm saying? That does not make sense. You gonna go smoke somebody because he cool with somebody that snitched on you? I've never heard of that. For what? Go get the nigga who snitched, folks. The fuck is you? What? What is you going to like? Like, come on, gang. What? What kind? What kind of? What? Like, they, these niggas just weird. Like, they was coming up with reasons to catch bodies. Y'all, I've been saying that shit at the beginning of the video. They just come up with reasons. Just come up. It's Tuesday. Sunny. My shoes brown. Gotta catch a body. Like, fuck, what the Y'all on some different type of weird. And it's a lot of niggas, gang. It's a lot of niggas like this, folks. It's not a lot of niggas that's just standing on business, protecting they, they neighborhood, protecting they people, protecting they self. You know what I'm saying? Turning into offense because they, they these people fucking with them on they block and they kept coming up here shooting every other day. I gotta go do something or they gonna keep coming. Somebody gonna end up clipped. And you go over there, you catch four or five bodies on your side of the war. That's one thing, folk. You know what I'm saying? I wish nobody's had to drop, but it's the street. Sometimes shit happen like that, you know? Sometimes people gotta go. Sometimes, sometimes you came to this block shooting for 75 days straight. You gotta go when they catch you. You know what I'm saying? They, they No mask on, you gotta go when they catch you. Sometimes the streets be like that, shorty. But these right here, they coming up with reasons out the woodwork, folk. And there's a lot of niggas like that who just want to be cool. They want to be like the rappers. They want to be like these niggas. Oh, I'm a real street nigga. I'm telling y'all, gang, this every video, shorty. Y'all got to tap into the Montana and TCG members folk. found Antonio in front of his grandmother's house Damn. in the 1200 block of North Cary Street when they shot him video. multiple times. He was taken to a hospital where he was tragically pronounced dead at just 22 years old. Montana had been quoted by an informant as having laughed about the murder and saying that Antonio deserved it. Montana had consistently been named by witnesses as the gunman in murders, but the police could never get enough evidence to charge him. Eventually, this would change and Montana would finally be brought to justice. Mm. How the hell they catch him? And look, look at him. He looked like a crash out. He looked like he knew he was going to do it. Look at the police officer. He looked like he knew he did and he knew he was going to get caught eventually. He like, whatever, I guess it's my time. Montana was officially arrested on August 19th, 2016, while coming out of a movie theater. He was 21 years old at the time of his arrest. He was charged with the murder of Alfonso Williams, and the police were trying to find enough evidence to charge him with over a dozen more. In the official announcement of his arrest, the police called him the city's number one trigger puller. In early 2017, Montana would be released from jail by accident due to a mistake by the employees. Y'all released him by accident due to the... While he was in jail, the feds decided to pick up his case. Due to the feds picking up his case, his state charges were dropped. The employees working at the jail didn't realize the federal indictment was in place, so they just let him go, seeing that he no longer had state charges. Rather than flee the country, Montana went to a Gervonta Davis fight in Brooklyn and posted a picture of himself at it on Instagram. Well, y'all niggas is slow. Y'all are slow. Everybody's slow, shorty. So, the state dropped their charges because the feds indicted him. So, the state let the feds take over, right? Some stupid person in the jail accidentally releases him because they think that he just, they dropped the charges from his dumb paperwork. You get what I'm saying? His nigga get out and go to a fight. The police were able to track him down the next day and rearrest him. The employees at the jail were suspended afterwards. Montana was suspected of many murders, but the police were able to gather enough evidence to officially convict him of the murders of Brian Chase, Marquez Jones, Lamont Randall, Gerald Thompson, Jacqueline Parker, and Antonio Addison. Montana wasn't the gunman in the March 2015 murder of Marquez Jones like he he was in all the others, but he was charged for being the getaway driver. Montana was ultimately sentenced to life in prison. Once again, this lifestyle just feels so pointless. You create a drug empire and make all this money, but you can't.
so many people and destroy so many lives in the process that you can't live peacefully. All of the work that you put in is rewarded with a cold prison cell yep. for the rest of time. Tell Let me know what you guys think about this. Stupid, y'all. Better. I don't know what's wrong with these people, boy. Y'all better wake up to real life, shorty. On the dead guys, boy.